Assalamu alaikum, I'm Dr. Junaid Jangir Abbasi and today I have a 7 year old girl who is sitting in front of you. The command is do the general physical examination and the relevant examination. First of all, introduction, consent and greeting. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Dr. Junaid. I have to do your work and inshallah, you will not have any problem. Then, I will do proper exposure and have a 30 second inspection without touching the child. I am exposing her, keeping the modesty of the girl as well. Considering 7 years old and having a look on the patient from the head to toe. I have noticed that she is obese, she is have a central obesity as well and peripheral as well. She is not looking into my eyes, not maintaining a good eye contact. Salam alaikum karen. Now she has responded. She is not answering to my question. That means she is having mental impairment to some degree as well. I am looking the hairs, the face, the neck, the chest, the abdomen until the feet. And I have noticed that besides being obese and slightly mentally impaired she is having polyductly if the camera can focus she is having six fingers she is obviously short I also I would like to take the height and she is also having polyductly on the in the feet as well so polyductly in the hands and polyductly in the feet as well if the camera can focus on the feet she has one, two, three, four, five, six fingers. She has a short neck. You can see the short neck. Now, at this point, I will keep a short case of obesity in my mind and I will keep the differentials of obesity. Obesity may be a simple obesity. It may be due to crushing or it may be due to a syndromes. Now at this stage you should know which syndromes are associated with obesity. Praderville, Bartlett Beadle, back with Weidman, Calamine, Froelich, Downs. They can all be associated with obesity. I would tell the girl to walk to see the gait, the gower and the spine as well. If you tell you. So the gait is normal. Here, that's why she is not responding to the commands initially. But it's a very good. Now she is able to stand. Yes, she is able to stand as well. So I have looked for the gower sign as well. Gower sign can be to proximal myopathy, which can be seen in Cushing as well. I have seen the gait and now I will see the spine of the patient. Yes. Now I have seen the spine. I will look for any midline scar and I will look for any meningomyosil. I will see the spinal tenderness because osteoporosis can be associated with Cushing as well. And I will also notice the interscapular pad of fat which can be seen in Cushing. I will look for the low hairline and webbing of neck because she is short statured and it can be associated with Turner as well I will ask the child to have weight and height so at 7 years she is having 40 kg weight and also I will do the height So I have taken the height as well, the weight and height and now I will calculate the BMI, BMI of this child. So the height of this patient seems below than the expected height at this age. Why the height is important? Because obesity with short stature has some other differential than obesity with tall stature has some other difference. Obesity with short stature, think of either endocrine cause or some syndromal cause. Obesity with tall stature, think of simple obesity or Klein-Felter syndrome. 
Now I will do thorough examination from hands to the head and then from the head to the feet, keeping all the differentials in my mind. Differentials like simple obesity, Cushing syndrome, syndromal causes. So I will start from the hands. In the hands, I will also look for the short foot metacarpal, which can be seen with pseudo hypoparathyroidism. I will look for the polydactyly. Sometimes polydactylies are not present, but their scars are present. So you will also note down the scars as well. I will look for the simian crease. I will look for the small hands, which can be seen in Pradal eye. After the hands, I will see the pulse. Pulse can be slow in hypothyroidism. It can be bounding in uh, carbon dioxide retention due to Pickwickian. Remember, Pickwickian syndrome is also a differential diagnosis of obesity. In the hands, I will also see whether the hands are cool. Cool can be seen in hypothyroidism. Then, blood pressure is important. I will take the blood pressure just to save the time I'm not taking but in the exam you have to take the blood pressure because blood pressure is important for Cushing syndrome. After the blood pressure come on the head see how are the hairs are the hairs easily pluckable are they dry or they are oily dry and easily pluckable can be seen in hypothyroidism oily can be seen in Cushing then look the shape of the head as well because if, if the forehead is prominent with bitemporal narrowing that can be seen in with prader relay and if the size of the head is large with obesity obese with a large head you can expect intracranial tumor or you can expect uh, hydrocephalus as well so i will take the head circumference as well After the hair is the head, in the head I will see the face. I will focus on the face of this patient. I will see whether the, it is moonlight which is seen in Cushing. I will also note down the telangiectasias if they are present on the face because telangiectasias can be seen in Cushing. And I will also look uh, for the coarse facial features which can be seen in hypothyroidism. Remember hypothyroidism can also be differential diagnosis of obesity. And also I will look for the typical down faces, the upward slanting eyes, the broad nose, the low set ears, the, the features of Down syndrome as well. Then after the face, I will see the eyes. Obesity with almond shaped eyes can be seen in Pradervel eye. There may be loss of outer third of the eyebrows which can be seen in hypothyroidism. There can be squint present in Pradervel eye also. And there can be epicanthic folds present in Down syndrome as well. So in this patient, in, there is squint and she is not maintaining a good eye contact. She has nystagmus. If the camera can focus, she has a bit nystagmus. And our vision seems to be impaired because uh, she is not focusing on each and every object properly. Ideally, you should check the visual acuity and ideally you should check extraocular movements as well. So after the eyes, I will focus on the uh, nose. In the nose, I will look for any uh, uh, midline dimple, which can be seen in hypopituitarism. And in the nose, also I will look for <laughs> any other abnormality like anosmia. Anosmia can be present in Kalaman syndrome. So, uh, ideally, some sense should be uh, placed near the nostrils and uh, the, you should ask the child whether she can smell or not. Uh, that's how you will judge Kalaman syndrome. Hairs, head, eyes, nose, look at the shape of the lips. Because the lips can be triangular, seen in Pradervilli. The lips may have central cyanosis, can be seen in Pickwickian. The lips may have midline defects associated with hypopituitarism or calamin and also look for the cleft lip and cleft palate which can have a syndromic association as well. So after the lips, see the chin, there may be micronychia associated with pradervil eye. Then see the neck, in the neck, look for the goiter which can be seen in hypothyroidism and in the neck also see whether the neck is short and also note down the supraclavicular 
pad of fat, supraclavicular pad of fat can be present in Cushing. So after the neck, see the precordium. In the precordium, see the parasternal heave. Ideally, it should be seen while the patient is lying down, but just to save the time, I'm looking at the parasternal heave. Parasternal heave can be present with right ventral hypertrophy, seen in Pickwickian. And if the patient is a boy, also look for gynecomastia. Gynecomastia can be seen in climb filter as well. In the abdomen, first of all, look for any stria. Stria can be seen in Cushing. Then in the abdomen, you need to see whether mass is present or not because adrenal mass can be associated with obesity. Adrenal mass can be a cause of obesity as well. So, in the abdomen, I will first of all do the superficial palpation and then I will do the deep palpation because I am looking for some adrenal mass. Adrenal mass can be a cause of Cushing syndrome. And I will also look for hepatomegaly because hepatomegaly can be seen in right ventral hypertrophy associated with Pickwickian syndrome. Then, keeping the modesty of the child, placing some curtain over the genitalia, I will look at the genitalia of the patient because the genitalia is important to see whether there are, is hypogonadism or not. Hypogonadism can be associated with Pradogal life, Barton Bidel, back with Weidman. <clears throat> Similarly, you have to note down the tenor staging because precocious puberty can be associated with Cushing syndrome as well. Advanced precocity can be associated with hypothyroidism as well. Delayed puberty can also be associated with hypothyroidism as well. So, <clears throat> you, you note down any uh, abnormality in the genitals especially for hypogonadism so after abdomen look for the hip examination in the hip you have to note down slit capital femoral epiphysis and avascular necrosis of the femoral head both can be associated with obesity you can see the movements at the hip joint especially external rotation internal rotation and abduction usually the internal rotation and the abduction they are impaired with slit capital femoral epiphysis Internal rotation, external rotation, and then abduction. So all movements are normal in this girl. So after the hip joint, <coughs> you have to see the lower limbs. In the lower limbs, the tone is important because hypertonia can be present with bladder villi. Secondly, the delayed relaxation of the ankle jerks. You have to note down the delayed relaxation of the ankle jerks, which can be present in hypothyroidism. In the lower limbs, also look for ankle edema because ankle edema is also important regarding hypothyroidism. So, <clears throat> that's hip examination, then the tone, and then the delayed relaxation of the ankle jerks, and then the ankle edema. Also, on the lower limbs, look for any bruises, look for any poor wound healing, look for any stria because they can all can be associated with cushing as well. Then. Ask the child to raise the both the arms. So raising both arms is important to see the sign of proximal myopathy which can be seen in Cushing as well. Earlier we have seen the gower as well. And another maneuver you can do to see the proximal myopathy is to ask the girl to squat in order to see the proximal myopathy. Then also measure the both the lower limbs because Limb length discrepancy can also be present in slip capital femoral epiphysis. Just to, just to save time, time, I'm not measuring, but in the exam, you have to measure uh, the lower limbs and you have to note down the limb length discrepancy and also look for any genovalgum or genovirus because that can be associated with uh, obesity as well. After this, look for any other relevant general physical examination which is left over and finally come up with your diagnosis at the end of the examination you should be very clear whether you have found some 
signs of Cushing like stria, like bufado hump, like any bruises, like intrascapular pad of fat, moon like face. And one thing which I have left, which I missed in my examination, in the skin also look for cafe or spots because McEwner Bright syndrome can also be associated with obesity. So, <clears throat> besides ruling out syndrome, ruling out Cushing, if you have rule out syndrome, if you rule out Cushing, then you should be very clear whether the signs of hypothyroidism are present or not in the form of <clears throat> dry plaquable hairs, midline dimple in the nose, coarse facial features, dry skin, any blackal hernia, delayed relaxation of the ankle jerks, <clears throat> and any abnormality in the genitalia as well. So, if there is no syndrome, if there is no cushing, if there is no hypothyroidism, then your diagnosis will be simple obesity. So you should learn which symptoms are associated with obesity and you should know the differential diagnosis of obesity with short stature and obesity with tall stature. In my case, my first differential is bartlett Bedel syndrome because the child is obese, she is short, she has a short neck, she is mentally impaired, her speech is not normal, she is not maintaining a very good eye contact. She just maintained an average eye contact. She was not very much responding to my commands. She has polydactly of the hands as well as of the feet. If the, I would like to do a formal eye examination of this patient because I'm expecting the rod and cone dystrophy in this patient, which is a feature of uh, Bartlett Bedel syndrome because these children develop retinitis pigmentosa and I would like to check the sugar of this patient to see the diabetes because diabetes is a complication of Bartlett Beadle and I would also like to do ultrasound KUB and also I would like to do a renal function test of this patient because renal impairment can be seen in Bartlett Beadle syndrome. In the end, cover the patient and say thank you so much. So I have covered this patient and thank you, thank you, Bosh Shukriya.